how there was a miscommunication. It does prove, though, that Van Halen does not get the respect they deserve, and it's weird considering how massively successful the band was and how legendary Ed was. It's just kind of a disgrace, if you ask me. Whatever they decided to do, I think they should have stuck with the original allotted time. What I don't right. understand is just because they couldn't get their original plans, they decided to chop it down to less yeah. than 20 seconds. And why did everybody else get their allotted time? Be- because somebody else was singing their songs. If you just want to play a video of Ed, okay, then play a video montage of Ed for a few minutes right. if that's what you want to do. But don't chop it down to, you know, 20 seconds, whatever it was. Yeah, I, it was like the 17 seconds, but I just thought that was ridiculous. Interesting enough, Wolf talked to Rolling Stone magazine and he told them it just seemed like kind of a tone deaf ask. It just didn't feel right. And I think some people are like, well, you should have just fucking done it anyway. And I don't think they were really thinking about the emotional attachment to it and just the fact that it isn't the right thing to do and something I'm not comfortable with. I've always been here to champion my father and to further his legacy to the ends of the earth. I'm a little biased, but I think you cannot argue the impact the three guitar players had on the history of the instrument. That's Les Paul, Jimi Hendrix, and my dad. So when some Something like this happens, you think he would be deserving of a bit more. And the Grammys declined to comment for the Rolling Stone article, which is interesting. What would you think of that? Not a big surprise. Look, they did what they thought they had to do. People didn't like it. I mean, that's the Grammys anyway, right? Right. I mean, most people always have something to complain about the Grammys. They don't like who won. They don't like who got nominated. There's a performance on the Grammys that somebody always gets up in arms about. It's not a year unless the Grammys are on and people are complaining about it. Yeah. And this is just one of the things they're complaining about. That's the truth. Also in the Rolling Stone article, this was interesting because he mentions at the end about touring this year. He says he hasn't booked any tour dates even for next year either. He said, I'm a germaphobe myself, so I want to make sure that whenever we do it, we can do it right and safely. We're all just waiting at the starting line, waiting to hear that pistol go off. I definitely don't want to be the first ones out there because you never know if it could just be a huge clusterfuck at the start. Who knows if we're even going to see him on tour this year. He's still got that date in October, but I don't think that festival is going to happen, to be honest with you. But yeah, I think it's like October 10th or something like that. I'm not really sure, but the California festival, I don't know if that's going to happen. What do you think? I don't know. I'd love to see him start doing some shows, but yeah, when it's safe. Yeah, absolutely. Also, he was on Smitty in the Morning. These guys, Smitty and Tim from their basement. It was hysterical. These two guys in their basement, and they interviewed him, and they hardly let Wolf talk. They were just kind of going off these two guys. They looked like they were from Duck Dynasty. It was really funny. A couple things that came out of the interview, he says that if his dad was okay, if Ed wasn't sick and he was alive, that this album would have come out at the end of 2018. So that's a long time ago, if you can imagine that. That's how long he's been sitting on this album. So it's been a really long time. He said the album was all Ed wanted to listen to, and he was so proud of it. And when Tim asked him if he had met Mark Tremont, when Creed opened for Van Halen in 1998, Wolf said, maybe that tour is at the edge of my memory. I can remember some of the 2004 tour. Well, I hope so, because he was on stage for that one. If you remember, he actually went on tour. Everybody forgets this. Wolf was on tour with Sammy for the 2004 tour. Do you remember this, Dave, when he came out for Ed Solo? Yeah, right. He would play something. He, yeah, he literally would play with Ed on stage. God, he must have been like 13 years old when we had like the long hair. And yeah, he went on tour with Sammy. And it was interesting. Ed also used to call his instrument lead bass because he said he would play with a pick and play aggressively. He said it was more like a rhythm player having in the band with Wolf on bass. He said Eddie never stepped on his toes or guided him in a musical direction at all. But he said that Eddie was incredibly surprised when he heard the music. He said, where did you get all this stuff from? And again, he reiterated. His most comfortable instrument is the drums. Interesting, huh? What'd you yes. make of that? 
You know, well, he played bass in the band because that was the only opening that right. they had. Well, that's I for guess, sure. Right? Yeah. And, and Al said, stay away from my drums. Yeah, you stay so away from my drums, I guess, kid. you know, that's the instrument he gravitates that's towards. That's right. That's right. Now, Wolf was also doing an appearance on the Indulge Express. He made an appearance on there, and he said he started touring with Van Halen at 16, of course. And he says it wasn't hard to fit in. He said, surprisingly not, it wasn't hard because he was jamming for such a long time with his uncle and his dad and it felt natural at that point the only unnatural part was being on stage in front of all those people and i think the way to make myself feel comfortable was to just imagine that they weren't there and be playing because you know it's my family and when they asked him about playing van halen's music he says i asked everyone to think about it think about if you were in my position because i think while fans maybe want to obviously hear that music i think it's a bit selfish to ask that of me without thinking about my my position that I'm in and what that does. When they asked him about what his visions for Mammoth were, he says just that I'm able to have this be my job and my passion. It's what my dad was so excited about. And I want to get out there and just do everything I can with it. And again, he reiterated that he was known as the rhythm bassist, they called him, because the, he, he always had sort of a bass tone that had a bit of distortion in it. And that's what Ed used to call it. So that was interesting. But, you know, I, I tell you, you know, playing with his dad and his uncle seemed natural. However, touring with Van Halen around the world, fronted by Ross, seems a bit different he never really addresses that i don't quite understand why he doesn't address that no i don't think he should do van halen music his stuff is so good let wolf be wolf you know what i'm saying but i would say forget van halen and follow this guy on his own path i wouldn't count on wolf for playing van halen or even you know getting involved with the archives i don't think that's gonna happen i I think if you listen to his music this guy is gonna go forward with his own stuff which is understandable and i think that's fine i personally I personally think that Al should be the one because let's be honest Sam and Mike are not involved they're not involved at all they're completely removed they're off with the circle Gary forget it he's off with extreme he was hardly in the band he's not going to be involved Dave he's drawing in his bedroom and waiting to go out on the road with Kiss and Wolf is too busy with his own solo career it is going to be up to Al if anything everybody take the pressure off of Wolf this guy's got his own path to follow he's a young man he's very talented and wrapping up the Wolf segment of the news he was uh, doing some tweets out there and he says I stated that publicly myself I am my own musician not my father especially right now I'm trying to carve my own path and asking me to quote unquote play dad felt like a tone deaf ask so I declined which he was referring to the Grammys he also said when he showed the album to Ed in its entirety it was just him and ed blasting it at 5150 and he said that his dad was just smiling and bumping me every time he heard something he loved he'd tell me to rewind stuff so he could hear it again and he said it was a moment he'll always treasure it was his favorite moment with his dad and someone asked him is that a bass or a guitar in the beginning of honey baby sweetie doll from a different kind of truth and he says the static beeping noises in the background are pop and the scraping sound that goes against the main riff is me with a bass wah. So a little tidbit there. What do you think of that? That's Dave? cool. Yeah, I right? like that. I thought I like that was that. cool. Speaking of tweets, David Lee Roth has been tweeting up a storm. He has been active on social media, posting more cryptic messages than usual. He tweeted out a photo of his feet. It looked like he was about to go on stage. He was dressed up. It was just his the bottom of his legs and his feet. And says, got my CVS vaccination, trying out my brand new stepping shoes. Stay tuned. So it looked like he was almost practicing or warming up for a tour, which is interesting. Another thing he put out was in one of his drawings, the soggy bottom. He says, nothing but WAP for David Lee. Now, WAP, for those who are not in the know, is a Cardi B song. And you know what the acronym stands for, Dave? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, we all know it's wet ass pussy. The funny thing in this thing says, nothing but WAP for David Lee. And then the frog says, we thinks it means wings and pizza. (laughs) 
which is kind of funny. And then another thing that was interesting is one of his drawings. I think it looked like one of his Japanese drawings, and it said something new, dot, 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 coming soon. So I don't know if Roth is teasing that he's about to drop that album or maybe just another song, but it has been a long time since he last released that single. I mean, that's like six months ago. So what do you think, Dave? Well, I hope it's something music-related. Yeah. The last time he did something new was that video comic book he did, I which know. was interesting from an artistic standpoint. Right. And he did have some music on it from the John 5 session. Right. So we did get somewhat of a preview of that. Mm Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm hoping that something new is something music-related and not anything else. I mean, no offense to Dave. Do what you want to do. But I'm waiting on some music, man. And we're all waiting for that John 5 album. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So, come on, man. Just throw us a bone. Throw it so Well, I guess he did throw us a bone with the video comic book. But I want more than the bone. Yeah, yeah. I want (laughs) want the whole leg. I want the whole leg. (laughs) Another piece of VH News snuck out of a Michael Anthony interview. Michael Anthony was a guest star on Steve Gorman Rocks on Westwood One radio program. Who is Steve Gorman? Steve Gorman is the former drummer for the Black Crows, and he is now like a big radio host. We talked to Mike a little bit, and he says, going back to the time when Sammy first joined the band, he said that he was shocked when he walked into 5150 because Sammy had, at the time, this is the summer of 1985, after his VOA tour, he had cut his hair off. And when he walked in, Mike said, that's not Sammy Hagar. He's the guy with the long hair. But he says they instantly became friends and the chemistry was instantaneous. They they probably played for 10 minutes tops and they knew they had something right away. He says the chemistry was just like, wow. And he also said that Warner Brothers was really giving them a rough time with the band. He said they had different ideas entirely about what the group should do next. And he said the management and the band's lawyers were completely in a panic with Roth leaving the band. He says Warner Brothers wanted us to change the name of the band. I remember Eddie and Alex were at Warner Brothers and they were yelling saying hey this is our last name. This is our careers and we're Van Halen. But uh, interesting that was going on and Sammy chimed into this conversation in a different program with Marcy Weiser on 95.5 KLOS radio program. He addressed the same situation because the mic news came out and then Marcy picked up on that and then talked to Sam about it and he says yep we were all in that room room they were originally telling the band that they should change their name obviously from Van Halen. He says, I knew what they were thinking because they thought if this doesn't work, at least you can go back with Van Halen again. But if you're Van Halen and it doesn't work, now you've ruined Van Halen. So they were trying to kind of preserve the band's name, but he says Eddie was adamant. He said, fuck that. This is Van Halen with a new singer. Now this was interesting. So Sam said I was 100% on board with it and he says I would have been in bad to be Van Hagar because that was suggested. The actual name Van Hagar was suggested. And he says, I would have said, let's just change the name back to Mammoth or something and we'll go back to the beginning, which is kind of funny because obviously Wolf is now Mammoth WVH. So in a 2020 interview with Ultimate Classic Rock, Ted Templeman admitted that he also initially had reservations about Hagar joining the band. He said he wanted them to change the name because when he first sat down with Sammy and his manager, they said, Call it something else if you're going to be in the band because it's not Van Halen without Dave. So there was a lot of pushback, more than people knew. So the question is, if the band was not named after Ed and Al's last name, would they have changed it? What do you think, Dave? If it was a completely different name, like Aerosmith or Metallica, like a, just kind of a name name, not not a last name, do you think they would have changed it? Or do you think it was just a family pride situation? I think they would have been more likely to change it. Right. Because the, it was their name. Right. And I think that no. was the main sticking point. Right, of course. Of course. Now, here's the other thing. If the band was called something else... Like, for example, like Dream Theater or something, right? Then, you know, I think Roth would almost have kind of some sort of ownership of it, almost like a company, right? Well, I don't know who would have had ownership over right. the name. I don't think it would have all necessarily went to Roth. No, no, not, not all to Roth. I'm saying he would have a piece of it. Like, for example, I remember when Mike Portnoy like left Dream Theater, he still owned a piece of the name. I'll get, give you another example. Bunny Carlos, the drummer for Cheap Trick, gets paid. He owns like part of Cheap Trick. He doesn't tour, he doesn't 
doesn't record anymore, hasn't for years, but he gets right. a piece. Well, but Dave could have had the same deal with Van Halen, the band. It just means he doesn't necessarily own the band's name, but he still could have had a, a piece of, of the financial pie. Right, yeah, I know. The funny thing about Van Halen is, like, if you look at ACDC, right? ACDC stuck with their name. They went from Bon Scott to Brian Johnson, but it had the same vibe, right? It was a very similar vibe. Motley Crue went from Vince Neil to John Karabi, totally different band. Kept the name Motley Crue, but didn't do well with it. People were like, this is not Motley Crue. I mean, they flat out rejected it. And it was a fantastic album. It's actually my favorite Motley Crue album. Then Black Sabbath, right? They went from Ozzy to Ronnie James Dio. Totally different band. That was successful for a while. But Van Halen, again, same name. But totally different band. But it was successful. It worked. So the key is is really the marketing. It's all the branding and, you know, 